Hi, this is Rick from 4 Community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. When I was, I don't know, I think about 19, maybe 20, I was driving home from somewhere a few hours north of Toronto. I made it as far as Aurelia on the 400 driving south where there's this really big hill and at the top of this big hill, there's an exit that leads to an OPP station. As I'm going up this really big hill, as I'm young, my clutch fails. The very first time I've ever experienced a failed clutch. I had no idea what was going on. Thankfully, I made it almost to the top of the hill, not quite as far as the on-ramp, unfortunately, but I did get it pulled over and I was able to get it parked. And then I jogged from wherever that was, uh, down the exit ramp, across the bridge, all the way over to where the OPP station is in order to use the payphone. Because back when I was 19, 20, there were no cell phones, man. Well, maybe there were, but those were for the very rich people, which I certainly was not. And so I had to jog all the way to get a payphone. It was about 11 o'clock, maybe midnight, something like that. I called my friend up. My friend came, picked me up, uh, drove me back to where he was working. He had a summer job uh, out of the city, drove me to where he was working. And the next day I got a tow truck to tow my car to the to the mechanic shop. And I had to call my work in and say, hey, work, guess what? I can't be there for the entire week. Okay, now this is a problem because my car just broke down. I've got to pay for a new clutch. But if I wasn't working, I wasn't getting paid, which is generally the case for pretty much everybody. I had a really big problem, but an opportunity presented itself to me where my friend happened to be working needed somebody for the week. And it just so happens that I was right there on a Monday and I was stuck there until at least Friday when the part for my car came in. So this problem became a wonderful opportunity. And I got a chance to work at a job that I liked a whole lot better than the job that I had at that particular time. So what about you? Have you ever been faced with a big problem just to discover that it opened up a new opportunity for you that never existed before you were faced with that big problem? If you have a story about how a problem ended up presenting you with a great opportunity, please pause the video and share your story. This video is based on my interpretation of James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4. Just three verses. This text teaches us something about facing our problems. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Here's the point that I'm going to try to make in this video. And I hope that you see this text a little different than me because I want to hear what your perspective is. Here's my perspective. With the right mindset, problems become opportunities. There are two big ideas jumping out in this short passage to me. The first idea is I'm hearing that trouble isn't the problem that we think it is. I think sometimes we catastrophize just the idea of a problem. And the second thing that jumps out to me is that I'm hearing that trouble is an opportunity to become something bigger than, than what we were before the problem actually came. So let's start here. Problems aren't the problems we think they are. The text says, when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. The problem with problems, with trouble, with trials, call it what you want, may simply start in our mindset, our perception of what the thing actually is all about. We live in a world where there's an app for almost everything. We do not like problems of any kind. Yet problems are still all around us all of the time. We try to avoid it. We try to prepare for it. We try to get out of it quickly. We very rarely see trouble or problems as anything other than bad. In this text, though, problems are being seen as good. Problems are an opportunity with the right mindset. Can I just take you back to the Garden of Eden for a second? Because what we're seeing here is really a connection to God's own character. 
And we're being asked to manifest God's own character like he shows it to us. So let's remember the Garden of Eden and the problems that God faced in the Garden of Eden. In the very beginning, he made a perfect creation. And at the apex of that perfect creation were two perfect people that he stamped with his image. They became his image bearers over all creation, Adam and Eve, representing him on earth and caring for the earth in his stead. He gave them dominion over all of the earth to care for it as though he would have cared for it himself if he were actually those two people. Awesome. And then what happened? Well, they chose something other than God and other than what God has asked them to do. They went off the page, man, and started writing their own script. They chose to believe that they were great all on their own. And they chose to reject a relationship with God. Now that became a big problem. The two that God empowered to care for creation the way that he would care for it, if he were them, his image, image bearers, they rebelled. And now creation has no nurturers. And now God doesn't have a relationship with his creatures that he wanted to have. God had a problem. However, in Genesis 3.15, we see what God does with this problem. He uses it as an opportunity. Before creation began, he wanted a close relationship with his creatures, namely with people. And this problem gave him an opportunity to get what he wanted at an even deeper level. So in Genesis chapter 3.15, we have the very first prophecy about Jesus. He's like, okay, I'll take this problem as an opportunity to get what I want. I will become one of my creatures so that I'll be like them and they can eventually be somewhat like me as well. He took a problem and turned it into this wonderful opportunity, which resulted in this great relationship that we have right now and this even better relationship that we have with God that we're going to walk into after Jesus comes back, when we spend all eternity with him. This text tells us that the way we rise to the problems we face has the potential to give us what we actually want. And what we want as Jesus' followers is the capacity to be more like God so that we can be in a closer relationship with God and live like eternity is already present right here, right now. The result of us rising to problems and living through problems and overcoming problems is endurance. And endurance is a prized trait. Almost every morning, right after I drop off my kids to school, I've been going to the gym to spend about 45 minutes or so on the exercise bike, and then I'm into the weight training. And I get on the bike and I do the weights to increase my workload capacity and be a healthier person. I'm working to increase my strength and endurance. Now, I'm far from where I want to be right now. However, I am only going to continue to move toward where I want to be by going to the gym and creating problems for myself. Staying on that bike for 45 minutes to an hour, that's a problem. My heart rate goes up, my legs start to burn. Lifting weights, that's a problem. By the end of the workout, I am pretty much spent. And the weights just keep on getting up. They're not getting any lighter, they're getting heavier. Endurance is still something our culture prizes. Endurance doesn't come without rising to challenges and sticking in. Problems aren't what you think they are, probably. Problems are opportunity to stick in and build endurance. Namely, there are moments to demonstrate your commitment to follow Jesus, put your faith into practice, and be like him. Be God's image bearer. Be an agent of God's kingdom. Advocate a place for Jesus in our culture. The problem with problems may start with our mindset. The problems we face may be the opportunities that we can use to grow our endurance and get what we really want. So let's investigate that further. Problems are opportunities. The text says, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Maybe the place to start when we're running into problems, troubles, trials, call them whatever you like, maybe the place to start is first to address our mindset. Problems are an opportunity 
to activate determination, to activate steadfastness, constancy, and even staying power under adversity. Problems are opportunities for our character to manifest. Well, I'm at the gym. I'm working out with a trainer who's helping me correct my shoulder problem. He's helping me to activate some muscles that I typically don't use because I'm protecting my shoulder from an injury. He tells me that the reason my shoulders feel like they're about to fall out is because the muscles that could be holding them in place are simply not being used and they're just too weak to do their job. So we're working on activating those muscles and it's been working. It's been weeks since I felt like my shoulder is about to fall out. Problems are a chance for you to activate your faith muscle and let it grow. And the parts of your character that rarely need to be called on so they can be grown and demonstrated. Here's the thing that's standing behind this passage, which you won't be able to see if it's just these three verses that you're looking at with me in this video. What's standing behind this passage is the idea that to be called a child of someone or something, you need to be like that thing you're a child of. Problems are moments for us to demonstrate our likeness with Jesus. In Genesis, at the time of the fall, God made a choice to show his character, which included grace, mercy, and the value of relationship with his creation. God choosing us and showing us his character isn't the full story. We now have to reciprocate and also choose God back. When we're faced with problems, will we choose to display the character qualities of Jesus, namely grace, mercy, faithfulness, faith, and a value around relationships, namely reciprocal relationships with God and the people around us. Problems are opportunities to reveal to God our choice to be like him and to choose him. We can fret, we can swear, we can panic, we can have anxiety attacks, we can get depressed. Sure, you know, all that comes along with problems. Will we also step up and attempt to demonstrate the same character qualities that God demonstrated toward us when he chose to uphold his value of having a reciprocal relationship with us, with his creatures. Will we find a moment in whatever problem we're facing to see it as an opportunity to be like Jesus and show God that we're reciprocating his choice to reach out and offer a relationship with us? Here is the summary. When we adjust our mindset, problems become opportunities of growth, increased endurance, and a chance to demonstrate the character of Jesus and show God that we steadfastly choose to be in a relationship with him. Well, that's it from me to you for now. Would you please like? Would you please share? Would you please subscribe? Would you please also ask for the link? We're meeting two times a Sunday, once at 10.30, once at 6 o'clock, where it's discussion-based. I don't preach. This is the preaching we get to discuss when we meet, and I sure hope your interpretation of this text is a little different than mine. For a community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God.